the flexible box module, usually referred to as Flexbox, was designed as a one-dimensional layout model and as a method that could offer space distribution between items in an interface and powerful alignment capabilities. When we describe Flexbox as being one-dimensional, we are describing the fact that Flexbox deals with layout in one dimension at a time, either as a row or as a column. This can be contrasted with the two-dimensional model of CSS grid layout, which controls columns and rows together. The following simple layout designs are either difficult or impossible to achieve with tools that we had prior to Flexbox. Now, thanks to Flexbox, we're able to do things like vertically center a block of content inside the parent. We're able to make all the children of a container take up an equal amount of the available width and height, regardless of how much space in either direction is available. We're also able to make all columns in a multi-column layout adopt to the same height, even if they contain different amounts of content. When working with Flexbox, you need to think in terms of two axes, the main axes and the cross axes. The main axes is defined by the flex direction property, and the cross axes runs perpendicular to it. Everything we do with Flexbox refers back to these axes so it is worth understanding how they work from the outset. The main axis is the axis that runs in the direction the flex items are laid out in. The start and the end of these axes are called the main start and main end. The cross axis is the axis running perpendicular to the direction that the flex items are laid out in. The start and end of this axis are called cross start and cross end. An area of a document laid out using Flexbox is called the Flex Container. To create a Flex Container, we set the value of the Area's Container Display property to Flex or Inline Flex. As soon as we do this, all the direct children of that container become Flex items. In order to see how Flexbox works, we'll start off with a very basic example. Here I have a div with a class of container and an additional class of C1. Inside it, I have three children divs, which have classes of items and unique classes of I1 through 3. If we look at our CSS, you can see that I have some starting CSS, so I've just applied a background color and some padding on the container. On the items, I've given them a border, a fixed width, and some padding, and then I've assigned unique background colors to each of the three items. If we go to the parent item, and we apply a display of flex and nothing else, when I save my page and refresh, you'll see that the items are going to appear side by side. Simply making the parent item have a display of flex allows all of the children items to appear side by side within their containing element. As you can see, by default, the items will display in a row and they start from the start edge of the main axis. Because I'm using the default flex direction property of row, the main axis is running horizontally across the container. The cross axis is running up and down. The items do not stretch within the parent element, but if I make my web page smaller, you can see that the items will shrink. Flexbox provides a property called flex direction. This specifies which direction the main axis will run and which direction the Flexbox children are laid out in. By default, this is set to row, which causes items to be laid out in a row in the direction of your browser's default language. So in English, that would be from left to right. We have other possible values of row, row reverse, column, and column reverse. Let's go ahead and see how this works in practice. Let me show you what happens if I change the flex direction. If we set the flex direction to row reverse and we save, you'll notice what happens that the items now appear towards the right hand edge of the container and the order has been switched. So the first item will appear farthest to the right and the subsequent items are going to stack next to it. If we change this value to column, you'll now see that the items appear as they did prior to me adding the display flex. If we change this to column reverse, 
Similarly to the row reverse, it simply will switch the stacking order of the items. Now that you see the basics of how Flex works and the property that defines what the main axis is and the direction of the main axis, we can start working with some of the other properties. We'll do that next.